for this important public hearing. I want to thank the members of the NFPA Board of Commissioners for holding these hearings in different parts of the community. I want to let you know that I asked the city's Office of Strategic Planning to conduct an analysis of the proposed rate reductions by the NFPA. For the following reasons, the city's Office of Strategic Planning concluded that the rate reductions would have a devastating impact on the city of Buffalo. NFPA Metro anticipates 30 million passengers this year, its highest ridership ever in the 38 history of the public transit system. The NFPA Metro system provides one of the most comprehensive transit services of any city of our size in the United States. The result is one of the highest transit ridership rates among large municipalities in the country. This is an economic asset that can be built on. <laughs> Due to the population and employment densities, the city of Buffalo accounts for 83% of all passenger boardings in the two-county NFTA metro system. About 31% of all households in the city do not have cars. The NFTA reports that 77% of all metro passengers do not own an automobile. Dependent riders are the most likely to be cut off from jobs and services if the NFTA's route reduction proposal is implemented. 40 43% of Buffalo's households have access to only one car. At 23% and rising, discretionary riders have comprised most of the NFTA's recent growth and are projected to account for all, for nearly all, future ridership increases. Because they have options, discretionary riders are also most likely to abandon the NFTA metro system if service is reduced. In 2010, I announced a major initiative called the Buffalo Green Code that is updating the land use and zoning policies of the city of Buffalo. Buffalo's land use plan identifies the critical role of public transit in revitalizing neighborhoods and employment centers across the city. Without a strong core transit network, achieving the Green Code's smart growth and sustainability objectives will be difficult. The stability of many of Buffalo's neighborhoods is at stake. Another in interesting statistic and fact to know is that bus routes in the city of Buffalo are the most productive in the NFTA metro system, typically generating over 30 passengers per revenue hour. The NFTA's 2010 strategic assessment, written by Transportation Management and Design Incorporated, provides recommendations to ensure NFTA Metro's future success, yet it does not appear to serve as the basis for the recently proposed service changes as the following routes slated for elimination or service reduction in the city of Buffalo are all considered highly productive by the NFTA's own strategic assessment. The one William, the two Clinton, the 6 Sycamore, the 15 Seneca, the 16 South Park, the 18 Jefferson, the 22 Porter Best, the 26 Delavan, and the 32 Amherst. The 16 South Park scheduled for elimination is the sixth most productive route 
in the NFPA Metro system. The 26 Delvin is the single most productive route in the system, yet is slated for service reduction. Eliminating routes such as 11 Colvin and 16 South Park will leave entire neighborhoods without effective transit service, which is defined as being within a five-minute walk of a bus stop or rail station. This could reduce property values and hinder neighborhood revitalization efforts. Eliminating weekend service on routes such as 1 William, 15 Seneca, and 18 Jefferson will also have a destabilizing effect on neighborhoods whose residents or more, are more likely to depend on bus service for shopping, attending church, and accessing services. I recommend that the NFPA follow the advice of its own plan to enhance service in the city while rationalizing and simplifying the suburban network. Thank you all very much. Thank you, ma'am. Now, number seven. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, my name is Laverne Blair, and I live in Lackawanna. I represent the senior citizen. I am a senior citizen. Yes, we have senior vans, and it's only limited there in Lackawanna. When they say you can walk, yes, I can walk. I thank God I can still walk without a cane or without a walk. But all senior citizens, can do that. When I have to take and get blood work mammogram, the bus, if they remove it, yes I can walk, but I can't walk that far. Two and a half to three miles to get a mammogram. <coughs> so when they take this away, and they say alternate uh, routes, you will leave Lackawanna with one bus, and it's the 14. The 14, it's so unfair. When you sit in your offices with your hundred and seventy to two hundred thousand dollar job, that's on fixed income. I mean fixed income, and you want to take from there. That's unfair. We have to learn to start from the top and let the trickle down. 